Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrechen has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrechen. Twenty-seven, and beginning to read at verse number nine, as follows in Jesus' name. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because of the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sir, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not com commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenicia and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing sin, they sailed close to Crete. But not long after they arose against the tempestuous wind called Euryclidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we said much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used help, undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, and straight sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir, you should have hearkened unto me, and have not loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it we must be cast upon a certain island. The 28th chapter of Acts, verse number 1. And when they had escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melissa, or Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped to see, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were processions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. Shall we bow, please, for prayer? Almighty, eternal God, tonight we bow in thy divine presence. 
We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for thy wonderful, wonderful grace, for thy love and thy mercy. And we pray now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every evil spirit and every evil power that may be lurking about these premises will be banished and driven out. May every evil spirit be bound. May every unclean spirit be banished. And may the glorious gospel of Christ be preached in power tonight. I pray, Father, that you'll fill this uh, great auditorium with thy spirit. May the power and the presence of God fill this great building. We pray, Father, that you will save every sinner that is healed. That you will stretch forth your hand and heal the sick and the suffering and bless lost humanity. Bless the island of Malta, O oh God. Bless this nation and bless the, bless the mayor of this city. My Father, we pray for the Prime Minister of this nation, Mr. Don Minkoff. We pray for his grace, the Archbishop of Malta. We pray, God, for Monsignor Michael uh, Dunsey. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, uh, for Mr. Tunner, the adjutant for the commissioner. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that the blessing of God will fill the lives of people tonight. We ask this for God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you may be seated, please. Tonight, for the next 30 or 40 minutes, I would like to share with you a message entitled, I Believe God. I Believe God. I want you to come back with me to the time when St. Paul was taken prisoner, when he was taken aboard his ship, and he was on his way to Rome, and there he was going to be tried before the Roman court. There he was going to stand before Peter. And on the way, they ran into much difficulty. St. Paul said to the centurion, he said, I do not believe we should move out onto the sea again. We should wait because it's a dangerous time to be sailing. I believe that we should wait for a little while. But uh, the Bible tells us that the centurion listened to the master of the boat, the owner of the ship, who said everything will be all right, strike out and sail for Rome. The Bible tells us that St. Paul declared, I perceive that there is much danger. There will be much harm to the ship. I perceive we're running into trouble. But the centurion did not believe Paul. He believed the man who owned the ship. And of course, as they went on their way, they found out that St. Paul was right. And there are many today who do not believe the word of God. They believe the voices of men. They believe the voices of other people, other than servants of God. They do not believe men of God. They do not believe the Holy Scripture. They do not believe God. And today we have many people who are clamoring for attention. And uh, we have the cursed doctrine of evolution that has crept its way into the school systems of the world, in our high schools, in our universities, and even in our public schools. And we have evolution that is saying that man came from the animal, that man came uh, some other way, other than the way God declared that man was created in the image of God, that it was God who created the heavens from the earth. It was God who spoke in the beginning, and suddenly the darkness disappeared, and light came. It was God who created the heavens. It was God who created the earth. It was God who picked up some dust in his hand. And out of that dust, God created and God molded. And God formed and God shaped a human being. And God blew into man's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. But there are those today who do not believe the Bible. They do not believe the Scripture. They do not believe the men of God. They would sooner believe atheists. They would sooner believe communists. They would sooner believe the teachings of men rather than the word of God. Beloved, I tell you tonight, the doctrines of men 
and the dogmas of men and the theories and ideologies of men are nothing in comparison to the Word of God. As a matter of fact, St. Paul said, Let every man be a liar, but let God's Word be true. Let the Word of God stand true. Let the Word of God stand head and shoulders above the teachings of men. I want you to know, my beloved friends, that the Word of God is true. It is completely authoritative. It is the final authority, and the Word of God will last. The Word of God will stand when the world are on fire. And here we find a pastor for, for the world. They did not believe St. Paul. They believed the words of men. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew's Gospel that Jesus Christ rebuked the religious people of his day. And he told them that they were worshiping God in vain because they did not believe the word. They were worshiping God in vain. Matthew, the 15th chapter, and verse number 8. Listen to this. Here's what the Bible has to say. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Jesus Christ rebuked the religious leaders of his day. He said, you are not listening to the Word of God. You're not obeying the Word of God. You have substituted the doctrines of God for the doctrines of men. You have taken away, and you're making of not affect the Word of God by your tradition. And some people would rather believe in tradition than they would believe in the Scripture. And there are those today, even among the religious, who above who above the Word of God said other things. I am thinking about a certain church called the Mormon Church, where they have their own book, the Book of Mormon. And they say that book is equal to the Word of God. I'm thinking about the Islamic religion, where they say the Koran, the Koran is the Word of God. I am thinking about religious people who substitute men's doctrines for the Word of God. They take the traditions of men. They say that we must follow the tradition of the elders. We must do what our fathers have done, what our grandfathers have done, and the church fathers have done. But Jesus said, In vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Oh, my friend, I declare unto you that today we stand upon the word of God. We listen to men like St. Paul. We listen to men like St. Peter. We listen to men like St. James. We listen to the Word of God. We stand upon the Word of God. And like Paul of old, we say, I believe God. I believe God. Thank God that today we can believe. We can believe God totally and completely. And we can stand upon the Holy Scripture. I'm thinking about a great man of God who lived many years ago. His name was Anathasius. And one day the emperor said to Anathasius, a very, very educated man, a man who was a tremendous man, a man who was a friend, at least he was very well known to the emperor. And one day the emperor said to Anathasius, you are a fool, Anathasius. The whole world is against you. Why don't you reject the teachings of Christ? Why don't you reject the Christian faith and become a heathen like you were? Why do you not do like the rest? The whole world is against you, Anathasius. And Anathasius looked at the emperor, looked him square in the eye, and said, If that is true, emperor, that I am against the whole world. He said, I will not recant. I will not turn my back upon Christ. I will not turn my back upon the Word of God. And if the whole world is against me, Anathasius said to the Emperor, then let it be known to you, Mr. Emperor, that I am against the whole world. I say amen to that tonight. Do you believe? St. Paul standing on that boat. Standing on the ship after the storm had continued for days, stood and said, 
of the things going to be all right. The boat was rocking. The boat was turning and tossing like a corkscrew upon the water. There is a course bobbing up and down upon the sea. The wind was howling. The thunder crashed. The lightning flashed. The boat was rocking like a drunken man upon the water. The white caps were coming over when St. Paul, the mighty man of God, stood there and said, Sir, I believe God. Because last night an angel of God stood before me. An angel of God said to me, everything's going to be all right. There won't be one person injured. Everything will be all right. And now I believe God. I believe God. And I wonder if you believe God. I wonder tonight how much we believe God. As Christian men and women, how much do we believe God? I ask you tonight, do you believe God? Do you believe completely? Do you believe totally? Do you believe the word of God is truth? St. Paul said, I believe God. And you know what happened? The very thing that St. Paul declared would come to pass, came to pass. His word came to pass. St. Paul said, I believe God. And it happened exactly as he declared it would happen. My message tonight, I believe God. I think about the wonderful song that Stuart Hamblin wrote many years ago. I believe the Holy Bible is the sacred word of God. It shall lead me to the fountains where the saints of earth and cross. And with faith in my Redeemer, I shall see the ages roll in the place that he has promised it is heaven for the souls. I believe, I believe he is able to set my spirit free after death has conquered me. I believe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I believe. Do you believe? The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Can you say with all the surety and all faith and all truth that you believe the Apostle Creed? Can you? Do you believe in Almighty God? The Apostle Creed goes like this, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Is he your Father? Do you know for sure that he is your father? Is he your heavenly father? Do you love the Lord with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your strength? Have you come into a relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ where you can actually call him father? Will we say he is God? It could seem so far away. God Almighty. But when you say God, our Father, that brings him very close. Is he your Father? Through Jesus Christ, the mediator, St. Peter declares, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than by the name of Jesus. St. Paul said, there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ. The bridge between God and man is Jesus Christ. The go in between, the mediator between God and man, is Jesus Christ, the one who was true God and true man. And today is the very Son of God, risen from the dead, living forevermore. My friend, I ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Have you been born again by the Word of God and the Spirit of God? Are you saved? Have you been converted from a life of sin and degradation 
has even converted from the devil kingdom into the kingdom of God. Have you had a spiritual conversion from darkness to light, from the devil to God? I challenge you tonight. Can you say with the church fathers, I believe in God the Father Almighty? It's to your Father. Maker of heaven and earth. He is the Almighty God. He is the omnipotent God, which means he has all power. He is the omniscient God, which means he is all wise and has all wisdom. He is the omnipresent God, which means he's everywhere at the same time. He is the almighty God. I believe in God Almighty, a Father, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe that God made the heavens and the earth? Or have you succumbed to the false doctrine of evolution? It says that the world happened by chance. In the beginning, there was an amoeba. In the beginning, there was a 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. In the beginning, there was a great explosion. In the beginning, there was some sea slime. In the beginning, there was a little shell. In the beginning, there was something, and then suddenly... Something happened, and the world came. My friend, the Bible tells us in the beginning there was God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe there's a heaven? Do you believe there is a real place called heaven? Or you like the Jehovah's Witnesses, who do not believe that there's a hell. And they believe that the heaven is just for 144,000 people. Do you believe like they believe? Do you believe like many of the modernists that there is no heaven, there is no hell? Or are you a believer? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. There is a heaven to gain in a hell that's done. There is a red hot hell burning with fire and brimstone. I believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ. His only Son, our Lord. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Is he your personal Savior? Do you know him for sure? Do you know him with, within your very heart of heart? Is Jesus your personal Savior? Is he your Redeemer? When I had a private audience with the Archbishop, His Grace, Monsignor Michael Dunphy, just the other day, he asked me, have you come to persuade men and women that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he is the Redeemer? And I said, yes, your grace. That is the reason for my visit. That is the purpose for my mission, of my mission. To declare to men and women that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. The Archbishop said, that is good. That is very good. I wish you the very best success for your mission of preaching Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ, true God and true man. I believe that Jesus Christ was with God in the beginning when God said, Let us make man in our own image. I believe he was there and the worlds were created by Jesus Christ for the glory of God. I believe that Jesus Christ was God. He came down from heaven. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost. He was more than a man. There are modernists who say that he was just a man. They say that Jesus Christ was born of Joseph. They say that Mary was not a virgin. But I say they are not telling the truth. They are liars. I believe that Mary was a virgin. Do you believe it? I believe it was the Holy Ghost who came upon her and the prophecy within her womb, the very seed of God. I believe that Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Ghost. His father was not Joseph. His father was Almighty God. It was the Holy Ghost who came upon the Virgin. And the Bible says that Joseph knew her not until 
to the black force of firstborn child. She laid him in swaddling clothes. In an angel. I believe. Do you believe? St. Paul said, I believe God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. You see your Lord? You see your Lord? You see the Lord of your life? It's Jesus Christ, the very Lord of your life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. Jesus died for you on the cross. When you were a lost sinner without God, without hope, when you were doomed on your road to hell, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ died that we might live. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus Christ died for your sins. You were born a sinner. The Bible tells us all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The scripture tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you believe? St. Paul said, I believe God. An angel of God stood by my side. An angel of God came, and I believe God. The angel gave me a message from the Lord, and I believe that God's going to do it, bring it to pass. Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe in God the Prophet Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Do you believe he actually died? Dead and buried. The early church fathers knew that there would be atheists and skeptics and communists and modernists and God haters who would try to say that Jesus didn't actually die. And so the church fathers said he was crucified. If you were crucified, you were dead. But he went to the second time and said he was dead and was buried. Three proofs. He was crucified, dead, and buried. He was sent into hell. The Bible says he went down into hell and he preached to the spirits in prison. Third day he arose from the dead. Do you believe that? I do. I believe it. I believe with all my heart Jesus Christ came out of the grave. Jesus Christ arose from the dead. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came from among the dead. He opened the door to Hades. He loosed the cast of souls who had died with faith in God before that time who were in Hades. He opened the door. He led captivity captive. He tore loose the doors of death, hell, and the grave. He stripped the hell to its foundation of its power. And he arose from the dead alive forevermore. Lo, behold, the man of sorrow. Lo, behold, him in plain view. There he stands, that mighty conqueror. Since he rent the veil in two. When Jesus arose from the dead, the veil in the temple separating men from God was rent from top to bottom. That veil was four inches thick, woven, so strong, the oxen pulling in different directions couldn't rend it. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead, 
seen was ready. And it went on. And Jesus Christ had cried, it is finished. The work was complete. Jesus opened the door to heaven. Now you can come to God without coming through a man, a high priest. You can come to God through Jesus Christ, the mediator. Between God and man. He arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God the Father. From when he shall come to judge. The quicken the dead. Do you believe in the second coming of Jesus? Do you believe he's coming to judge the quick? The word quick means those that are alive. He's coming to judge the quick of the dead. St. Paul said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God of the dead in Christ, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we meet the Lord in the air. So shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Do you believe in the second coming of Jesus? One of these moments, one of these hours, one of these days, one of these months, one of these years, the heavens will open and the clouds will bring in. Jesus is coming. Behold, he cometh. Christ is coming. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? Have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost? Do you speak with other tongues? Are you filled with the power of God? Are you baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire? Do you believe in the third person of the Godhead, the triune God? Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost? I do. I believe the Holy Ghost is a person. I believe he's more than a person. I believe he is a person. God the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter cannot come unto you. But if I go away, I will send him unto you. They were in the upper room. They were waiting for the Holy Ghost baptism on the day of Pentecost. When suddenly he came, and 120 men and women were filled with the Holy Ghost. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there and received the Holy Ghost. St. Peter was there. The disciples were there, 120 men and women. And the Holy Ghost came and entered into them. And they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues. They were filled with God's dynamite, God's mighty power. And they were filled with God's life. The Spirit of God came within them. And they were baptized with fire and power. Out into the streets of Jerusalem they went, preaching the word of God. Before that, they were afraid. Before that, Peter had denied Jesus and even cursed and sworn. And after that, he became a leader together with James and the other apostles. He stood up and preached. People who were afraid and were hiding behind closed doors came out of the, their hiding and stood on the streets and preached went to their death, praising the Lord. And others were saved, watching them die with such faith. They were thrown to the lions. They were torn asunder. They were crucified. They were beheaded. The early church, they were martyred. But they didn't stop. And the message of the gospel went forth. It multiplied and grew. And the glory of God filled the earth. And the Bible says they filled Jerusalem with the doctrine of Christ. They turned the world upside down. St. Paul asked some people in Ephesus, some Christians, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we haven't even heard about the Holy Ghost. Paul laid his hands upon them and they began to speak with other tongues and praise God as they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Apostles Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I do, do you? Who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sat down the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From where to the dead, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church. made up out of blood-washed believers from every country and every nation and every tribe and every kingdom, the red and the black, the yellow and the brown and the white from many churches. They'll come from the Protestants and the Catholics and the Jew, perhaps. They'll come from the Orthodox. They'll come from around the world. The blood-washed, those who believe, those who have repented, those who have accepted Christ. Come, the church of Jesus Christ. Are you saved? Are you a part of that church? The church of Jesus Christ, the invisible church of Jesus, the invisible church. Are you a part of this body? Are you a part of the body of Christ? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? You knelt and said, Jesus, I'm a, a lost sinner without God, without hope. But I believe in Jesus Christ. He died for me. He took my place upon the cross. He was wounded for me. He was bruised for me. He bled for me. He suffered for me. He died for me. And I received Jesus into my heart. That's my Savior. Have you done that? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Oh, thank God we can all join together in worshiping God, the communion of saints. We can assemble together in the house of God. We can worship together. This is a theater auditorium, but tonight it's a church. Of course, the church is made out of people, people who gather together around the Word of God. They assembled in the catacombs. They assembled today in Russia, in the forest, if you please. Of course, there's no religious freedom. They worship together. The early Christians had to go underground are you a part of the body of Christ? I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Around the Lord's table, the Holy Communion, drinking the cup that reminds us of the shed blood of Jesus, eating the bread that reminds us of the broken body. Communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. Who forgives your sins? None other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the one who died for you. That's the power to forgive your sins. I can't do it. I didn't die for you. I can just preach this glorious gospel. I can just tell you that Jesus will do it. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. One of these moments when Christ comes again. Those who have died of faith in Christ will be resurrected. Those who believe when Jesus comes and are alive will be changed in a moment. And we'll rise to meet him. There are two resurrections. The resurrection of the just at the coming of Jesus. And a thousand years later, the resurrection of the unjust. Those who will be cast in the hell forever. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the for forgiveness of sins. Thank God we can have the forgiveness of sins. And the guilt is taken away. The condemnation goes. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Communion of 
sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. When this life is over, and this world is gone, we stand before Jesus. What then? Life everlasting. You and I will live forever. You are a spirit, and you live in a house called a body. Your body will die, but your spirit will live. And when Jesus comes again at the first resurrection, at the coming of Christ, at the rapture of the church, your body, if you're a Christian, shall be changed in a moment. And you shall receive a glorified body that will never die. You live forever with Jesus. If you're a sinner and you die without Christ, you'll be resurrected in the second resurrection, the resurrection of the unjust. And your body will then come back to life and you'll live forever in a spiritual body, in a body that will never die, in a place called hell. Jesus said there shall be weeping and gnashing. Where the worm dieth not, the fire never quits. Do you believe God? Paul said, I believe God. Paul was standing on the ship out here in the Mediterranean. The ship was tossing like a course of the water. The angel of God had visited St. Paul. Paul stood there and said to the captain, everything's going to be all right, because an angel of God stood before me. And I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Jesus said in Mark 1 and 5, repent and believe the gospel. Do you hate your sin enough to get rid of it? Do you hate sin enough to forsake it? That's what it means to repent. Repent. Repent of your sin, Jesus said, and believe the gospel. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John, the first chapter and verse number 12, the Bible tells us Jesus came unto his own, his own, received him not. He came to the Jews, but they rejected him. Jesus came unto his own. His own received him not, but to as many as received him. To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Do you believe in Jesus? If you believe in Jesus, you'll receive him as your personal Savior. If you really believe in him, you'll accept him. If you really believe in him, you'll live for him. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, and if you believe the gospel, you'll live the gospel. John, the 20th chapter, verse 31, the Bible tells us these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That's what the Bible is about. These things are written that you might know. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Must believe on him. Through believing, you will have a life through his name. In Acts, the 16th chapter, and verse 31, the Philippian jailer cried out to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul didn't say join the church. Paul didn't say go and be catechized. Paul didn't say give money to the priest. Paul didn't say go and have a mass said over you. Paul didn't say be kind to the poor. Paul said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And thou. St. Paul said believe on Jesus. 
John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 66 to 69. Jesus stood there and said, Will ye also go away? Jesus had preached in the multitude. They thought the message was too strong. They left him. Jesus turned to the crowd and said, Will ye also go away? They said, Lord, Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? We believe and we are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe it. We're sure of it. That you're the Christ. That you are the Christ. That you are the Messiah. That you are the anointed one. That you are the Savior. And you have the words of eternal life. There's no one else to turn to. Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus turned and said to them, At Caesarea Philippi, Who do men say that I am? They said, Some say that you're alive. Some say that you're one of the prophets. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Jesus turned to them and said, Who do you say that I am? And the Holy Spirit of God came upon St. Peter, and he was, it was revealed to him, and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Upon this confession, upon this tremendous truth, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon St. Peter, no, he was just a man. Upon the truth that Jesus is the Christ, Hallelujah. Peter was a very poor man to build a church on. He even cursed his Lord. One day Paul had to rebuke him because Peter was showing respect of person. No, it was upon the truth, the confession of who Jesus is. The Bible tells us the church is built on Jesus Christ. He is the chief cornerstone. And upon the confession of faith, if God revealed to St. Peter, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Jesus said, I will build my church on the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. John 14 and 1, Jesus Christ said, Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Jehovah's Witnesses, they say, believe in Jehovah and you'll get to, you'll be saved, everything will be all right. Believe in Jehovah, but Jesus said, you believe in God, that's good, but that's not good enough. Believe also in me. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life, and the wrath of God abideth. But the prophet Isaiah knew people would not believe. And so in Isaiah 53 and 1, he wrote, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He knew people would not believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He knew people would not believe in divine healing. He knew people would not believe in Jesus Christ, the Savior. And so the prophet asked the question, Who? Have believed our report. Romans 4 and 12. Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Romans 10 and 9 and 10. But if thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. heart and believe unto righteousness, but with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved, and you shall be one of God's 
David went against the giant. The giant said to David, you come at me like I was a dog with a stick, with a stone. Giant Goliath said, I'm going to kill you. David said, you have blasphemed the army of God. You've gone against the Lord God of heaven. You have, you come at me with your sword and with your shield, but I don't come at you in my own power or my own name, but I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He said, God will deliver you into my hand. I believe God. St. Paul said, I believe God. David said, I believe God. St. Peter said, I believe God. Do you believe God? Romans chapter 10. Let me give it to you one more time. And I'm through. Romans the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And here it is. Right from the Bible. But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto I'm going to ask every head to bow and every eye to close. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray God that you will forgive every sinner. Lord, that you will cleanse every life. God, you will save every sinner that's here tonight. Heal the sick. Bless each one. Let your conviction rest upon the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Our sister comes to sing just for a moment. <laughs> I am a 
You have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end-time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, God.